So in this example, um, first thing we want to do is go ahead and separate the variables. Now we can see, though, if we need to separate y and x, it's kind of difficult right now when they are up, in this, uh, up as a power, right? So what we need to do is either you know, get them off of that power or sometimes somehow kind of rewrite them. So automatically, we can see that there's a challenge here. We just can't, we got to get them outside of that power first before we can like separate them. However, what we can use is we can use the rules of exponents because we know that x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b, right? So I kind of see this. And what I want to do is just kind of work backwards, OK? So if I do that, I can rewrite this as dy over dx equals e to the y times e to the x. The reason why I do that is now it's just a little bit easier now for me to be able to separate these, because now all I got to do is um, you know, divide by the ey and multiply by the dx. So I'll multiply by dx on both sides. And therefore, I get um, sorry, that divides out. So I'm going to let dy is equal to e to the y, e to the x, dx. And now, to get the dy over here, I can just divide by e to the y. So now I'm left with um, 1 over e to the y, dy is equal to e to the x, dx. Correct? Yes? Good? No? OK. Um, so now we've separated our variables, right? And usually that's worth a, a good check, OK? Now the next thing we need to do is we need to integrate. Um, so if I'm going to integrate here, so now typically if I was going to integrate 1 over e to the y, I would integrate this as e to the negative y dy equal and integrate e to the x dx. All right, and again, it, we could add the plus c to both sides, but we know once you add the plus c to both sides and you subtract, you, know, you get the c, you can just get them the same side. We're just going to add the c to the x side. All right, so let's do this one because that seems really easy. That is just e to the x plus the big C, right? And that's going to absorb this C over here. Now, the next thing is coming into, well, what's this? So again, with exponential, you got to think like, what if I was going to do d over dy of, of e to the negative y? Well, that'd be a chain rule, right? If I was going to take the derivative of e to the negative y, that would equal negative e to the negative y, correct? So what we need to kind of think about here is I have this e to the negative y. If I need to integrate this, you can kind of think of this as like a, a or you can think about this as like a u substitution. Let u equals negative y du, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, u, du with uh, dx equals negative 1. So therefore, du equals negative dx. So, or I'm sorry, we're dealing this in terms of y, aren't we? dy, dy. So what that means, if I need to integrate this, I need to have that extra negative, right? And so I need to include this extra negative. So therefore, I can put the negative out in front. So it's really a negative e to the negative y. So therefore, the integral of this is going to be a negative e to the y. And then you could add, or e to the negative y, I'm sorry. You can add the plus c. But when you subtract c on both sides, you get this way. And again, let's just like double check that again. If you take the derivative of so we're saying the integral of this is going to be that. So let's go and take the derivative of d over dy of e to the negative y, let's, or negative e to the y. Let's make sure that works out. That's going to be take out the negative out in front, right? So therefore, you're going to have a negative, and then you're going to have the derivative of e to the negative y, which is e to the negative y, and then times the derivative of negative y, which is a negative 1 which gives you e to the negative y, which was originally what we were all this right now, which is what we were originally looking at, right? So the integral of e to the negative y is going to be negative e to the to the y. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions with that? So you can just do the u substitution portion, just like how we did. Or you can also just think about this like as far as pattern recognition, just checking the derivative and the antiderivative of e to the negative x and make sure you're going backwards, make sure that works. Um, all right, so now we just need to go ahead and solve for c. So I can subtract a e to the x here. So therefore, c is equal to um, 
negative e to the negative y. Wait, what did I? Oh, we don't need to solve for c. We're trying to find the value of c, right? So we're trying to, I'm sorry, we're at a particular solution. So now, rather than go ahead and solving for c, that's actually just a waste of time, actually, what I just started to initially do. We don't really need to solve for c. We don't need to solve for y. We need to find the value of c, and that's it. And we're given our, our points here, right? So we're given values that we're going to go ahead and plug in. So therefore, we're going to have our y value is going to be 0, and our x value is going to be 1, because you're plugging that into that function. So therefore, I have negative e to the negative 0 equals e to the 1 plus c. Well, negative, negative uh, 0 is just 0. e to the 0 is going to be 1. So that's going to be negative 1 equals e to the 1, which is e, plus c. So therefore, c equals negative 1 minus e. So uh, e, that's, did I forget? That gives me my negative 1. How did I write that? That's negative 1. Yeah, that's just right, but I. Huh? What? Well, we don't. We, we're just finding C right now. I think I made a mistake, though, on my work. Because I'm seeing that I have e to the 1 is just e, so therefore it's negative 1 minus e. I'm not seeing anything wrong there, but I think on this worksheet I made a mistake. So, all right, so now let's go ahead and um, plug that value c into our uh, differential, into our equation that we have, and then go ahead and solve for y. So here was our equation we had, e to the negative y. I'm sorry negative e to the negative y equals e to the x plus, and now we're going to plug in our c, which is negative 1 minus e. Right? And that's like our new c. So negative e, oh crap, we're running out of time. And we want to go ahead and solve for y. So now we just got to look at, well, how are we going to solve for y here? Right? We got to solve for y, correct? At this value, we want to be able to solve for y. Right? So we found our value c. Now we just need to be able to solve for y. Well, first of all, let's get rid of this negative. So therefore, e to the negative y equals negative e to the x plus e plus 1. How do you get rid of that e? Natural log each both sides. So you have negative y equals ln of negative e to the x plus e plus 1. And then just divide by negative 1. So therefore, y equals negative ln of negative e to the x plus e plus 1. And that is your particular solution. Just in time for the bell. Beep, which I think 